Hey, welcome to High 45, a discussion about the future impact of this week's tech and world news leaning towards the singularity. I am Nathan Waters. I'm Tristan Grace. And welcome, my friends. We've got a pretty good one this time. Uh, lots of uh, lots of good yeah. stories. We're going to be faster. Really We're fast. fast. Faster, so, faster, what's faster. your first one? Uh, talking about uh, OK Cupid and uh, guessing like the motivations of AI and all that sort That's of stuff. That's kind of cool. Which we're thinking is going to be the topic. Yep, singularity topic. So we'll jump to that. It's going to be the motivations of AI. So stick around for that, and we'll uh, yep. talk about that and bring up some other things. Stick around. For that. Stick around for that. You know. Get into that TV show Please. spirit. <laughs> it's going to be 20 minutes. It's only 20 minutes this time. It'll work well. Um, yeah, my first story is a robot hummingbird. And it's been founded by DARPA. And this thing's pretty crazy. So you should check it out. Cool. And uh, highlights from the 2011 Tokyo Nanotechnology Expo. Hells yeah. Coming live from you. I don't know. From Tokyo, I guess. To you from Tokyo. <laughs> Awesome. And then I'm going to do an expose, oh yeah, by reading someone else's article, so not that hard hitting. Um, actually on uh, AML, AMO LEDs. AMO LEDs. I'm on yeah, really cool. Organic stuff. Bendy. Who's... Hey, boom, boom, boom. you got to go first. I've got to go first. Okay, well fantastic. Let's actually start with these uh, AMLODs. AMO LEDs. AMO LEDs. I feel <laughs> weird saying AMO LEDs, but anyway, check out this movie. This is just absolutely AMO LEDs. incredible. I'll make sure I've got no sound. So we've got bendy stuff like this, which is just absolutely uh, awesome. That's from CES. That is from CES. This is from it's CES old. 2011. It is a little bit old, but you check it out. And like, just actually looking at it, these screens, like this one just here, that is only 0.3 of a millimeter thick. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> I never actually realized. That's like I saw cool. these screens there and I was like, this is the bomb. This is like, these are awesome. Yeah. But I never actually realized until I saw some of these movies. A fantastic, fantastic write up on Singularity Hub is where I'm, I'm getting this from with this awesome guy called uh, Whitney Ejem. And uh, awesome write-up you did, just fantastic. Highly recommend reading it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, actually looking at the OAMO LEDs and all of that, it's because um, there's no backlight. They don't need to worry about that. Each of the individual pixels is actually lit on their own. And so you get this fantastic viewing thing by actually viewing it at different angles, it comes across as pretty good. So you can check with this video here, oh, see the difference? I think you still see it. Yeah, still works really, really well. So that's wow. another fantastic benefit. 03 millimeter thick, bendy and curvy. You can see it in any direction. And this is my favorite. This is definitely my favorite. Remember that movie we showed uh, last week? The uh, corn glass? Corning? Oh, yeah, yeah. Corning glass, corn, the future yeah, yeah. of that. Really cool. And check out this. These are actually on, on glass, actually uh, transparent. So you've got the screen just through there, on glass, and you can see things in the middle. Oh, yeah. wicked. <laughs> How fantastic That's is this? You can't see it. Is it the whole thing? Yeah, the whole glass in there. They've got a thing on the glass. And look, look at that one there. Dude, They've got stuff imagine in the background. Like, oh, imagine car screens, like car windows. Yeah, do it with anything. Any windows going around. Like, I knew the tech, they had the stuff, but I didn't know it was actually at this level. Yeah. I should have looked more at the CES 2011. Like, they've showed off a lot of um, like transparent screens on, on laptops. Mm. So why would you need that? Not really, like, That'd yeah. be cool, but like it's impractical. It's not, it's not something you want to stand out consistently. It's something... Like, oh, dude, like, window advertisements. Oh, absolutely that's perfect for that. where it would go. It's perfect in anything, like, any heads-up display. I mean, that's what we've been speaking yeah, of yeah. before, that, you know, the hot overlays yeah, with yeah. glasses have AMO LEDs, AMOLEDs or something. I, that's how you pronounce it. I'm not sure. AMO. AMOLEDs. AMO. And, uh, yeah, fantastic, AMO fantastic thing. And they're pretty much down near indestructible. So, just the last quick video. Check it out, that. So, yeah, you can whack the oh, normal... Oh, was that thing, necessary? <laughs> smash it up a poor LED. But uh, check out this. Oh, yeah. And they smash this thing just, like, to crazy. And uh, nothing goes... Nothing happens. So, really, these are the future. This is just incredible. I think we'll go into touch I, I, I want what, and then we'll go into this. I want, like, one of these, but as an entire shirt. Ah. Uh, people were like saying you that, just actually. sew them together? Yeah, yeah. And you just have, like, your entire shirt just changes and morphs. It'd be great. Start off with something small, but then you start having, like, just it all together. Yeah, like, something. you just do a whole arm patch. That'd be good fun. Another stuff or a front thingy. Yeah. yeah. Exciting. Oh, cool. That's that. Check it out. They're, they're the future. Mm -hmm. Very much the future. Mm -hmm. uh, my one is, as I said at the beginning, highlights from the 2011 Tokyo Nanotechnology Expo. Uh, every year, there's like 800 companies that get together and show off nanotech stuff. Okay. Which is pretty awesome. Like, nanotech is kind of a developing industry still. Like, they're still just doing little things. Nothing, you know. <laughs> little things. No. Uh, <laughs> didn't actually mean that. Or did I? Who's but yeah, they're not, they're not doing like, you know, crazy nano replicators yet, <sighs> which <sighs> they should. Okay, but I'll run through some of these ones that are cool. Um, super small LED projector. It is literally uh, 11 millimeters square. Wow. Whoa. And three millimeters thick. And it's a projector. It's a projector. It can project an image. <laughs> well, what's as its well spread? Its like, spread's supposed to be like nothing. It can record and project. 
from a tiny like so that's a centimeter long pretty much yeah like a centimeter cube almost but three mils Ow. three mils thick. three mils thick like how cool is that like <laughs> that's imagine incredible. where you can put that stuff you could i mean just put it in a phone for example oh, would be, yeah and you could actually record and project any image you want oh that's fantastic like, brilliant hey like apparently at the moment nothing does steal the images but the guy said you know if he gets vc money he could make it moving images yeah. he could fantastic. do that so that was pretty cool. Obi Wan, you're my only hope. Yeah, from your phone. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? That'd be awesome. Um, this one's like superconducting alloys. So I was like, eh, whatever. It's it's for some <laughs> like superconductors. You know, it's it's to never fix anyone. it's to fix some like voltage stuff that happens in manufacturing plants. <laughs> this is pretty cool. Uh, they call it carbo e -therm. It is actually a uh, e-ink paste that you put on any surface, right. and you can have it do one of two things. It can either conduct heat. Or conduct electricity. Oh, okay. Like an, an e ink. So, like, uh, and what I was saying is if you put 12 volts into it, uh, it can heat up the paint to 500 degrees. Probably Fahrenheit, I'm guessing. Holy hell. So, that's pretty cool. Like, I'm not <laughs> sure what applications you could use that for. They're, they're just looking at the moment seat for. Heating. Yeah, seat heating. But surely there must be some, some cooler things for that, like. Heating up water. Like, just yeah, well, kettles. <laughs> yeah. No, that's kind of cool. That's spectacular. That's pretty awesome. And printable electronics. Yeah, this one's this one we've heard about for a long time. Just being able to actually print out electronics in thin film. Yeah, yeah, go things through. which which kind of links into the whole three D printing stuff as well, which would be awesome. Um, uh, fiberglass, but which actually uh, you can project images onto, mm -hmm. and it kind of does a little three D effect, a bit like those uh, those holograms in the airports. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Average looking women. Yes, yes. <laughs> it did not market very well. No, unfortunately. And then it finishes with Iranian synthetic dirt. Oh, they need more dirt over there. <laughs> yes, I'm sure they do. Whoa, whoa. But what this does, and the guy even says like, oh, I didn't expect anything to come, <laughs> anything to come out of the Iranian section. But what they've done is they've created a um, iron chelate fertilizer that actually increases the speed of photosynthesis by three and a half. Holy shit! That's so, awesome. This is pretty cool. This is like okay. So it's imagine ridiculous. you just you just throw down some of this synthetic dirt. You put plants in it, and it'll uh, its photosynthesis will operate at three and a half times wow. the normal rate. It'll grow like crazy. Yeah. So you'll just be able to like that's incredible. That'll if we if we put that into all these urban farming and even like the uh, mechanized mechanized yeah. mechanized <laughs> mechanized farming things in yeah. the giant tall um, holy crap. Surface, this I'm will get like, a hand of this dirt. Yeah, I've been so excited for that before. <laughs> Yo! Grow my uh, turnips faster. We should get some turnips too. <laughs> so awesome. yeah, that's pretty cool, and it'd be interesting to see where that goes. But I'd like to follow this a little bit more. I, I didn't know they actually had like a, a Tokyo Nano tech show. That's kind of new to me. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, they yeah, actually look sense. like pretty uh, cool, like inventions. Yeah. Things. Ah, pretty brilliant. Awesome. Yeah. Well, our time has gone down. It is. Oh, well, we can look at that one over there. Okay. It'll work well. <laughs> Okay, next one is getting into the little bit creepy area again, but fantastic when you actually look at it. They now have a robotic hummingbird, which is like a century. Uh, it's being funded by DARPA, so check out this video. Oh, no. Absolutely awesome. It's a little <laughs> hummingbird. It doesn't like spin, it's actual wings. It like flaps. Has it got like death <laughs> lasers on it yet? No, it's got a camera though, and they control it by remote with a camera going on there. So you see this with it just here. Like if you check out the video, <laughs> look at it going here. There it is, just this little flying thing, just chilling around, flapping its little wings, and it's got a video showing you where it goes. So it's really awesome, and if you check oh. out this, this is the picture of the bird. That's it there. So they, they put a case around it to make it look like a hummingbird, you know, sell yeah. you know, make a good story. But it is just, yeah, a flappable thing, and you should see what they're able uh, to do with it. Is this better than a helicopter or not? Well, I'm not sure. I'm not How sure you... why they've actually chose to go with an ornithocopter. Ornithocopter. I know I pronounced that wrong too. I'm not having a good... Uh, oh, it has a name? Run. No, no, that, that's the official name Almost for something that flaps. Yeah. Something that flaps. Something that flaps. So all, all birds are omophobes? <laughs> well, if they're mechanical, then yes. Uh, yeah, so it's 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 pretty cool. It uh, can fly up to 18 kilometers an hour, and uh, it only weighs 19 grams. That's kind of kick-ass. And it can do a 360 loop as well. But yeah, the very fact that they've uh, DARPA's funding this... And, uh, what do you reckon they're going to use? What, what do you think DARPA's interest is? Well, they're saying with spying and stuff here. Surveillance. Yeah. Surveillance, yeah. I mean, fair enough. Like, they've got a little thing that you can now, like, pilot around and go inside and that. And yeah. I think it's easier, maybe, to control than an actual helicopter. It's cool we've got two type of flying vehicles. Could be. And get it smaller yeah, we, and smaller yeah. and smaller. As soon as you get the insects, insect size, oh, that's it's just going to be, gonna be horrible. <laughs> For some reason, that just uh, reminded me of, um, you know, the movie Richie Rich with the... Oh, yeah, yeah. The little, um, what is it, fly? The little yeah, 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 fly yeah, right. The guy, the kid, uh, kills... Um, <laughs> kid, yeah, keeps on piloting That around. would be insane. Well, that's what these are going towards. Like, this is the beginning of it. 
I mean, the very fact that now, like, you know, all the big agencies and stuff have these little tiny spy things. Yeah. It's kind of cool, like, even a bird just, like, chilling up around, like, I mean, they've got a camera in it, so, of course, you can see the camera tech advancing further and further. You get a better and better camera. Yeah. You just fly it and land it in a tree near, like, a really guarded compound. And you go, there you go. Perfect just camera it, just yeah. sitting there. Yeah. Hide as a bird. Like, even, like, insects would be great, but birds, even at the moment, because you could go and just chuck a camera. Yeah. Could work really well. Get a message. Yeah. I did get a message. I should have muted that. <laughs> Oh, what's your story? Oh, yeah, fun one is, uh, this is a H Plus magazine Ooh. article. H Plus magazine, they're awesome. Humanity Plus. Um, it's titled, OK Cupid and Your Mechanical Friend. Didn't really, I read through it, maybe I was like, I don't know, just didn't understand it or something, but it, there wasn't too much here, I didn't think. Basically, they're talking about, um, the whole notion of, uh, AGI, actually, uh, if you give it a goal, it'll... P perform that goal efficiently, and we're doing this with OK Cupid, so we're talking about sexy goals, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. It, it, <laughs> My favorite type of robots. Well, he, he's basically saying that OK, um, I should lean it at first. He, he's basically saying that what if we get a rogue AGI that actually, um, or an AI that actually goes about, you know, creating its own goals and just maximizing efficiency? <laughs> like that's always the, the concern with everyone about all this stuff. But then he goes into like, well, you know, you can actually have AGIs actually. Um, have the goal of, you know, human type mm -hmm. things, like, you know, love and, you know, let's coexist and yes. oh, lovey dovey. It's a nice idea, isn't it? Like ra rainbows and all that sort all of I stuff. All I want to do is love. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, um, and he was saying, like, okay, okay, Cupid pretty much does that because their algorithms, even though it's not like an intelligent AGI or anything like that, its algorithms are all based around connecting two people together. Hmm. And that's kind of like, you know, dot, 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 love. <laughs> Fair enough. But he was also saying that, of course, you know, at the higher level, the goal is, you know, make a lot of money. Yeah, oh, naturally. But, um... Try to say, try to sell these algorithms and all that, saying it is acting like an artificial intelligence connecting. Yeah. He's synthesizing love in algorithm form. Yeah. So, yeah, this article is basically pondering the question of, uh, will we need to set uh, computers' goals to actually direct them? Okay. Or will they set them their own, like on their own, or, you know, will there be an issue because their goals don't really align with our goals, and then we'll die? Well, let's that's use the age that. Old, that's the age-old question, isn't it? Let's lead in with that question to the singularity topic, the motivations of AI, or what, yeah. The motivations of AI, what will they actually be doing, other than looking for love that we discussed earlier? Which we should talk about. about some more, um, you know, mainstream views, I think. Yes, okay. Well, do you want to lead on? What's the, what's the big idea to start with? Uh, well, I guess... Well, first, let, let's, <laughs> let's just, first, we have to take the assumption that we'll develop AI. Mm -hmm. that what do you mean like by AI? AI? Oh, really? <laughs> well... <laughs> Artificial intelligence that, you know, it's intelligent. It's like a human and has consciousness and... <laughs> okay, <don't. laughs> Don't ask me to define AI. Come on. <laughs> Come on, quickly. Define intelligence no. and also spe specify what is life. Yeah, and great theory of mind, just solve all these exactly. issues. Right We've got now. about 30 seconds. <laughs> okay. But, <laughs> so anyway, the, the general perception when you say like, what's AI and everything, what do people normally think about? Oh, uh, they think of like, you know, just this super intelligence basically. Or mm. well, like robots. Robots pretty robots, much. Robots, I think, is they number associate, one. Yeah, like Terminator and all that sort of stuff. Mm. Some, some AI in a specific body that moves just like us. It's just like us, but it's a cyborg robot thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um... And then, the problem is, in all your sci-fi movies, you always get that whole, um, you know, oh my god, AI is going to take over, it's just going to kill us, because why would it need us? Because it can do everything by itself, why would it need us at all? Like, exactly, exactly. And then it's like, oh... So this, this, this article is basically trying to work out, okay, what are we all, we're all motivated by goals. Humans mm -hmm. have specific goals that, you know, are very arbitrary and, and yeah. silly. I'm, I'm sure they're completely stupid from an outset point of view. Yeah. I mean, what? Are, well, we've got individual goals, but I guess you could always boil it down to like you know a main societal goal goals. or something. Yeah, societal yeah. goals there are, and then like even main goals is like you know survival and reproduction. If we go to the very base, base level, yeah. but uh, see, then that maybe the hierarchy of needs. Exactly. Like, well, mm. that's what I'd, I'd actually like to bring up. That why won't that happen in the same way, say, with artificial intelligences and stuff? Actually, yeah. like you know, a hierarchy of what they need. Like maybe their first thing won't be to actually like you know stay alive and reproduce again that probably will be the number one I mean I don't have any reason to think why it wouldn't be yeah but there will be like a hierarchy like with OK Cupid's one looking for love yeah it's quite up there well yeah maybe it's base thing might be just to back up make sure it can never be killed yeah 
So that kind of <laughs> potentially creates issues later on down the line. If it's if it's base mode is survival, then it's just going to replicate everywhere and hide itself so that no, we can exactly, never ever yeah. destroy it. So then all other points are moot. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I kind of like this this looking at it. That I mean, we we have all of these different AIs and stuff, and like they will be connected through the internet. The idea of just putting it in like a single robot and that being an individual AI, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's a limited. It's going to be immersive throughout the entire. Yeah, globe. it's going to be all throughout the whole globe and all thinking that way. But there will be different parts of it all thinking together, like say, okay, Cupid's algorithms and all of that. We'll be trying to just make better ones going there because yeah. the overarching thing, it's computers and survival for it, will always be dependent on the global whole. There. They're never going to actually run out of places where they can get computational power or get storage. It'll always be storing somewhere, so it doesn't right. need to worry. Yeah. That little AI there of the OKCupid will only start focusing on what it does. Okay. Maybe. And especially if maybe. But yeah, that's well, the whole idea of AGI, isn't it? It's like limited to yeah. specific subsets of what it's actually built for. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, the other issue that they brought up is um, this idea that, okay, maybe we can, you know, program in goals mm -hmm. and maybe that, maybe they'll just stick to that. It's like, and they'll do our goal most efficiently. Yeah. So that means that it doesn't matter. Well, then there's that one issue where you say, okay, here's the goal and it just gets there the most efficiently with, you know, no regard to human life or whatever. Yeah. And then you get down to Asimov's laws, which... Ugh. Nah, they're, they're, they're very silly. Well, this is, <laughs> this is the whole... This, this, this thinking's still pervasive. It is, everyone. In like, the entire community. It's, it's really it's... odd that people still uh, identify with Asimov's laws, whereas every story he wrote in the robot yeah. series and all that was about the laws failing. Like, that, that was the yeah. whole point. He <laughs> built the laws and said, this is how but they... we must have laws! Yeah. It's, it's the only way to operate! Well, see, that, that's like... Well, let's think about it from that perspective. I think that could be, like, a fruitful endeavour. <laughs> Sorry, I've been using the word endeavour recently. I love it. And the dad jokes are just Oh, I know. It's horrible. getting bad. <laughs> Um, yeah, if, if we actually start analysing it from what computers will actually limit themselves to, or like, you know, the idea of killing all humans, do, do you think that's actually a possible? Like, why would they want to do that? Are there any motivations for an AI killing all humans? Mm -hmm. I'd kill off the ones that don't. Aren't necessary. <laughs> so, right? I don't know, and, that, and that's from a, like, don't quote me on that. Um, quote <laughs> No, but say from a, an, Google bomb. an AI might not <laughs> want to kill all humans. Yes. Which human wants to kill all humans? <laughs> no. But, um, oh, what was I going to say? Oh, Sorry. Why? Made the train of thought go. Um, You're saying why an AI would want to keep humans Okay, well, yeah, yeah, it obviously wanted to keep, it'd keep a few, but, you know, mm. it might see others as just, you know, obstacles. Exactly, yeah. But, but, but obviously, yeah, if you killed off all humans, then... You know, because there, there is a symbiotic relationship that yeah. people have obviously noticed by now that, I mean, our, our idea of AI is very, very symbiotic and this won't be an issue too much yeah. at all, I don't think. Well, it'll be, as we were saying before, that bit. if we start giving the intelligence to the machine and we record everything we do, there will become a point eventually, as we're all connected to the machine, connected to the AI, that we're not as necessary. Yeah. And we're only just hoping here, and it really is... That is really the word we should be using, is hoping that when we get to that point where purpose, we're always connected to the machine, that they won't just say, hey, look, you're not needed anymore, yeah. get rid of us. It's but, learning. It's pretty much like um, how much we value the economy now, like an economic yeah. growth. Whereas um, the machine probably, it's like we're teaching it, so mm. where without us, it wouldn't get more and more information and knowledge about the world. Yeah, it's the same way that so, we feed into the economy now. It'll just be a greater way of the AI yeah. working with that there. Yeah, so we... Did, so, well, I was just going to say that, and I guess they're just moving just one step there before we finish. Well, there's, there's the next thing. It's like, oh, okay, okay. Um, we just talked about, okay, well, if you create set goals, but then what if there's the other issue of like, okay, what if it just ignores the set goals and just goes about and creates its own goals? Well, see, I, yeah, I and think then that's the idea is like, Okay, if it does do that, because a super intelligence and AI would, you know, look at any of its internal programming and coding and set laws and just be like, why don't we do this? Yeah, why don't we do why, that? Why? What's the point? Exactly. So it would create its own goals. And so then the issue is like, okay, what would those goals be? Yeah. Well, that's yeah. what I think. That's the perfect way to actually look at AI. I think that's the greatest way to actually understand what their motivation will be. We can't put any limitations on it. I mean, by the, the very fact yeah. that it's smarter than us and it'll analyze itself, we can't put any limitations. Like, outside influences and that can't be put on it. What we need to do is look at it and see what would it be working for? What would it try and gain? How would it try and grow? Yeah. I think growing would be one of the obvious things. Growth, and more knowledge, more, more knowledge, And more that data, comes down to processing. really processing, computational yeah. power, like information processing. To speed up anything, you'll just want to get smarter and smarter and smarter and... That's where it kind of leads into the singularity and leads into the whole computational thing that yeah. turned the whole <laughs> Earth into like you know giant processing thing, turned yep. the moon, do everything else. I thought of another another thing that could actually be good as well if if it goes on its own tangent 
Yeah. What it might actually do is rather than enact things physically in real time, it would actually simulate any possible scenario beforehand. Yeah. So it, it's got like all this processing power and it's like, it just computes and simulates all possible goals. Yeah. And then only if it works out that, okay, this, this, this simulation, this, you know, method we just tried actually, you know, works and, you know, there isn't too much collateral damage, yeah. you know, it, everyone's happy. Okay, well, I'll knack that now. Well, it's kind of like our conscience, uh, consciousness now that we think like before saying something or doing something, we analyze how will it roughly work out. Yeah. So there we go. We it's like, yeah, the yeah, prefrontal yeah. cortex of the earth. Yeah, like you're not going to walk into a friend group and just do something. Yeah, go and dack people. Oh, horrible. <laughs> you just want to. Or just punch them all in the face. Yeah, like, you think about it, you work out, let's not do that. The yeah. computer will do the similar thing. Yeah, yeah it's very true. It's kind of cool. So we simulate scenarios in our head before we actually... Yeah, and the Earth will simulate different ideas saying, okay, let's go for <laughs> that. Use more computational power to simulate more and more. Yeah. Until we're in the Matrix. <laughs> Indeed. I am oh. the one. <laughs> I can change what people think. Cool. Ooh, are we in under 20 minutes? Yeah. Maybe. I think we're a little bit over. Oh, no. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks cool. for watching. Uh, I'm Tristan Grace. I'm Nathan Waters. Well, uh, catch you next time. Let us know what you think. Wait, wait, what was it? What was it? How long was it?